Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting and to episode 5 of Wonderful Pretty Care. So let's go ahead and get started in 3, 2, 1, go. Cutie patootie. <laughs> yeah. Oh. oh okay. We see penguins! Penguins! We might see penguins today! Oh my god! There is something else um, I do want to talk about, but um, we're going to wait until the end of the episode to talk about that little mishap, but it's not really a mishap because it's kind of con confirming it and everything, but um, when I saw it a couple of nights ago, I was just like, oh, yeah, I'll make sense now. Thank you for spoiling that, but it it's a good thing. Thank God. No. I know. It's so distracting. Paying some mom and make them all cutie patootie. Ta da! Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. same thing with the harness and everything else, yeah. You need that connection first. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And that you won't let anything bad happen to them. Mm hmm. 
No. That's all? Hmm. Oh. Oh. Yeah, her, her original owners. <gasps> oh! It's a possibility she was just abandoned. Oh my god. Of course.
You want to walk as a person today? <laughs> no, no side to side. Mm, okay. It's not time yet, but we get in there. It just takes a time. Nice. <laughs> you okay? Mm -mm. <laughs> oh. Wait, you need to learn how to skate for a second. There you go. Dang, that's a big behind penguin. <laughs> It's not going to be that easy, though. Oh. Easy. Hmm. That's cheating. And who about to go into the ice cold water? <laughs> but what if it doesn't come out?
I mean, but we're not going to talk about the ice, you know, slowly but surely breaking. And yeah, there we go. If you would have told me that the leash would have been the one for this show, I, I probably would have looked at you like you were nuts. But you know what? I love it. So what are the bunny ears going to do? Well, good hearing one. Nah, babe. <laughs> Maybe next time, baby. Did you, did you see her face? <laughs> oh my god. Hi, kitty. 
here is too much. Emotional officer. <laughs> Bye. They so freaking can't. I can't. Okay. Uh, and it makes me wonder, too. Yes. Why wasn't, for, I mean, Wonderful able to use hers? But I'm guessing due to all of the little animals and such. So we have a rabbit and we have now a penguin. Um, Each girl can only use a significant amount and such. So that's what it looks like it's signing point, like, going towards. It's very similar to not only, like, with Go Princess and their packs and stuff. And then same thing kind of from a whole sky in a way, but not really because both girls were using both at the same time. So yeah, but I, I love how with Friendly and her wand and ish, with the rabbit, she just gets bunny ears. That's it. You would think that they would have had a moment where she could jump as high as a bunny. That would have been another thing to catch it but because, you know, as a pretty her, they're already jumping high as I don't know what that kind of deems necess unnecessary. You don't even need it. But no, overall, this was a cute episode. One, love the continuation of the backstory on Kamui because really, five weeks into this show and we still, like, we're getting to know a lot about her because I think a lot of us immediately, honestly, you know, from the get-go automatically thought that Komogi was already Iwoha's, like, since day freaking one. But knowing that, yes, she's found her, uh-oh. No, baby. <laughs> It makes sense for them to have their first argument. That's so freaking cute. Oh my god, I can't. I can't. And it is traditional. Duh. Because, like, typically with the magical girl and their mascot, you already know 9 out of 10, they're gonna have an argument. Um, but no, going back into it, because, number one, we found out that, you know, yeah, she was possibly either abandoned or she must have ran away from home. We don't really know, like, the full instant story of... Komugi before she met Iwoho. All we know is that Iwoho was outside one day walking somewhere, possibly going to school or just going, you know, to get something. And she witnessed her and decided to take her home. And you can see that from the episode that we did find that out, how very, you know, um, scared baby was. Because typically when you're looking at a lot of animals, cats, dogs, whatever, um, out here that you like because you never know where the heck you don't see a, a abandoned dog or an abandoned cat um they are very defensive and that's exactly what she was initially from the get-go because having a, a pet like that being lost and you know having to deal with everything on your own is super duper sad for them and such so they have to have like a very thick skin very quickly and of course they're not always going to be wanting to trust people because of what certain people will do to pets sometimes um but i do love the fact that her mom was like you know she has a collar like obviously she has a family and i get it if you want to you know bond with her but you know eventually the biggest is, the issue is we have to find her family. So what I'm kind of hoping going into the rest, the remainder of this series is that we do get a point where let's say we do find her original family and maybe some way, shape or form, maybe possibly I'm guessing, um, original owners just don't want her anymore because we, we need that context of the backstory essentially but i do love the fact that we got to see number one also just continuing the bond between these two and seeing how yeah oh yeah come on you didn't 
didn't like to go on walks first. She didn't like the leash. Da 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 da. Cause you know puppy and such. Cody, Cody is just lazy. Cody, Cody is just like almost one hundred percent like me. I'm lazy sometimes, and you know they always say if your dog is lazy, then you're also lazy as well. I like to go on walks depending on my mood and such. Um, but Cody still likes to go outside, if, especially if it's first thing in the morning. Or if I am, um, if I go to work and if my mom is like, oh, hey, come on, let's go pick up DJ and stuff from work and stuff. Cody's always excited to go on a freaking car ride. Now, Cody does not like to go on what my mom and I deem is a death walk. Um, so you know how like when you go into like a long walk in the park and stuff and let's say you go around like several times, like there's maybe like a track or, um like, a little trail or something like that. We took Cody on that, like, I think, um, pre or during the pandemic. It was one, I think, pre or post-pandemic. I don't remember. Um, but my mom wanted to go, and I was like, sure, I'll go with her. And I was like, well, let's bring Cody. So I brought Cody's leash. I bought Cody's, um, I, no, I didn't have the, har the, the harness thing as I do now. So we went around one time. And we went through these, like, uh, like this small little area of woods and stuff. <laughs> this dog came out immediately, booked it over to the grass, mind you, because he was so tired. My mom is, like, way ahead of us. And I'm back here with the dog. And she's like, what's wrong? I'm like, the dog won't come. The dog just is tired and stuff. And so we were about to go around for a second time. This dog gives me the look of, what the heck is this woman having us do? Oh, my God. My mom likes to make little voices, uh, and I do it, too, for Cody. <laughs> and she's like, I keep telling you, don't mess around with her, Mommy. Like, oh, my God, because, yes, Cody is my baby and such. And, and I'd be looking at Cody like, I'm, well, I'm sorry. That's my mom. There's nothing else I could do with it. But literally, like, uh, when we were going to about to go around, like, the second time, I was like, hey, he, he's tired. Um, go ahead and give me the keys, and we'll just go sit around the car while we wait for you. And I got in the car with him. <laughs> you know how, like, when an eagle, any type of bird flies? That was Cody. Cody was, like, plopped down on my thigh. And I was like, oh, God, you poor thing. Um, so, got him some water and everything. He was totally fine. He was just, it was, like, you know, he was just hot and panting and everything, only because walking around and such and being tired from that. Because he had a, a buttload of energy at the start, but, you know, he was like, hey, yo, I'm ready to go home. And after chilling out with him for a little bit and everything, coming home, getting him some food and some water and stuff, because I also brought food and water with me, um, the next day, baby was, like, skyrocketed. Had so much freaking energy and stuff, to the point that my mom and my aunt was like, well, maybe you guys should go again, <laughs> too. But we haven't gone in, like, a hot minute, because I don't always want to go. And then, depending on, like, what my work schedule is for the week and stuff, and then my mom's, it's complicated. But... No, yeah, like, once again, I'm just loving the bond between these two, and it's just, it's too many feels. You got to make me cry again, Jesus Christ. Okay, but now, let's talk about the elephant in the room. So, a couple of days ago, or really, uh, today's Saturday, and I'm gonna try to get this out tonight. So, I think this was about mid-Wednesday or Thursday. This was at least a couple of days ago. So, we're, we're talking about, um... Typically, you know, like the, the Final Cure spoilers and ish like that. So, initially, there was, I saw this quote, uh, no, yeah, it was a quote tea, tweet. Um, I saw this quote tweet, and it showed, like, everybody. So, of course, R2, then um, Yuki and her owner, and then Satoru and his bunny and such. And, like, literally trying to match up the colors like we did a couple of weeks ago. And that's talking about the possibility of Satoru being the Final Cure of this small group of, like, four going eventually into six. Well, so there was a quote tweet from that that tweet that initially did not really show, but we got the names of the final two cures. I personally don't remember them because, girl, <laughs> duh. Um, a lot of things on my mind this past couple of days, but um, it was very obvious that it's going to Satoru and his bunny. But... 
it, it's just about a wait and see. Of course, something tells me we're not going to officially see what he looks like and what his bunny is going to look like until about midsummer. So we still have a long way to go until we get there. But the fact is that a freaking, it's a Japanese, I think it was Ami Ami or something. The Japanese freaking page spoiled it right there for the names, but didn't show the merch or anything. Just obviously confirms it for a lot of us. And so, I mean, because we, that's just the tradition with Pretty Care. We end up seeing spoilers either like a few weeks into the new series or at least by summertime. So, I mean, regardless, I'm still going to be surprised when we get to see like what he and his bunny get to look like. But I'm, I'm happy that we now are finally being like, bam, this is true. This is what's going to happen and da 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 da. But it still could go something else. Like, I don't think he essentially is the final cure of this show, him and his bunny. Um, maybe, I'm not sure because, like, the bunny really has it right now. Same thing with Yuki. Neither one of them have a voice. Yuki hasn't spoken yet. And something tells me that, especially after seeing the episode list, we're not going to see Yuki and her master become pretty curious until, like, April. So they're really. And I'm not mad at it, but they're really stretching this out. And I get it because they want the the relationship of Iroha and Komogi to really stick and really go in for people. They're doing kind of very much similar to Hidogata Sky because that is kind of our now new tradition where we're taking two cures, having them be together for a long period of time, and then eventually add everybody else but at the same time, I think a lot of us were really kind of expecting to go back to the other way. But me, I'm, I'm here for it regardless. I think it's a good idea because not only to strengthen their bond, even with the fact is next week in episode six, we are getting a moment where these two are going to have their first argument. But it makes the most sense because that argument is going to strengthen their bond as well. We might end up seeing Wonderful using her wand potentially with the penguin involved as the power up. But... There's a lot of what it's what ifs and stuff, but we won't know until we eventually get to that. But yeah, I think if it's in my opinion, if Yuki and her master or her owner do not get their cures by April, it's probably gonna happen by May. So um for now, I'm just gonna say April because after seeing last night's episodes list for the rest of this month, I was like <sighs> okay. But no, episode nine I'm really excited about because <laughs> Komogi is going to go to school. And so everybody's memeing the heck out of that, um, saying, is it going to be true that can a dog, you know, read and write? But that's going to be really hilarious to see. But other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards episode five of Wonderful Pretty Cure. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And of course, I will see you guys officially all next Saturday for episode six. But until then, I will see you guys all next time. Bye.